Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. Um, and we're joined here today by Nicole, by Richard and by Guillaume, um, live here at Expo Real. Um, really interesting to be back at Expo Real. On the International Investors Lounge, we had a, a, a huge program uh, over the three days. Um, Nicole, maybe just some key takeaways from that. Well, for a start, it was incredible how many people, it's definitely back to normal. Uh, the stand was packed, but Expo Rally in general was, really had a buzz about it. So obviously, everyone is a bit concerned about what's happening. There seems to be a real dichotomy between the fact that the fundamentals of the real estate market are still incredibly strong, especially in sectors like uh, we had a lot of sessions on residential, student housing, logistics, and so on. But obviously, there's a lot of concern about interest rates going up, about inflation, and what, what is going to happen, you know, what is the trajectory, plus the obviously the geopolitical challenges we all know about in Europe. Um, so uh, concern um, and there seemed to be a bit of a hiatus in the market, a bit of a halt in activity, less deals being done because people are not sure what is going to happen. So there's a bit of a wait and see attitude. But I really liked what uh, Philippe Lapierre of uh, La Salle said. He said uh, in, sort of in strong winds even turkeys can fly, that now is the time to differentiate uh, after 10 years of easy pickings with low interest rates and very favorable conditions lots of tailwinds for real estate and everyone sort of piled on the bandwagon. Now is the time for people who really know what they're doing to, to step up and uh, find the right deals, find the opportunities, because as we know, for every challenge, there is an opportunity. Um, so I think uh, he was saying it'd be really interesting to see who, who sort of survives this phase and, um, and uh, it'll be very interesting to, to see where the markets go. Yeah, and um, one of the key things that, that uh, I thought was that in comparison to maybe uh, even the week before where there'd been a lot of bad economic news coming through, quite a lot of shock to the market um, and a lot of uncertainty, that I would say there was more of a kind of note of sort of um, cautious optimism here, if anything. Um, Richard, obviously you were working on stories for the uh, Expo Day Daily News here. So I guess what were some of the, the key takeaways and what was the atmosphere for you like? Yes, I mean, we, we were publishing every day the Expo Day and so so like for the second issue, I talked to people on their way out of the first day. And the, it sort of ranged because I talked to a Swiss investor who said that uh, the atmosphere is between doom and denial. And that was probably the, the harshest. And I said, well, there's quite a lot of optimism as well. He said, well, that's part of denial. Then I met other people, for example, from Romania, who are really buoyant and really enthusiastic about the future, very positive. I think people are worried in the short term. In 2023, there's a lot of uncertainty, what's going to happen. Um, with energy prices, etc. But I think people are really happy to be back together and talking and meeting face to face. So that's still, we're still in the sort of post-COVID friendly phase, you know, when everyone's happy to see each other. That was clearly the case. There were a lot of people very keen to get back to normal. And I haven't seen the figures yet, but for sure it seemed very busy to me. And uh, I mean, on that note of doom and gloom versus cautious optimism, what was interesting, I think if I'd have spoken to people who were at, say, the, the GRI in Paris, um, that there was a lot of doom and gloom around that because the momentum was traveling in, that, in, in, in a sort of negative direction. Um, but I think here there was much more of a focus on, uh, I suppose, what the fundamentals are in the market. The fact that, if anything, the, the lack of financing is going to limit development. Um, and so, therefore, you know, rental rises are likely to happen because there will be pressure on stock. Um, and so, unless we see a really big um, economic downturn, then this, that, that Occupy market is still going to be quite positive. You know, I talked to um, Deep Key, who are very much into ESG. And they were very happy with how things are going because they said that previously, in previous expos, they would talk to middle management who had been assigned the CSR role and it wasn't. But now in this, in this expo, they were talking to the managing directors, the CEOs um, who were taking uh, ESG and in particular energy um, consumption really seriously. So, you know, it's going in a good direction for many people. Yeah, and energy, um, energy and new energy was one of the areas. I mean, we did a number of things around ESG, sustainability, livability, and actually energy came through in, in all of those in terms of a high priority, both for the occupiers and also everybody beginning to look far more at, uh, I suppose, um, total cost of their real estate rather than just the rents and, and including energy in that. And a lot of talk around particularly self-sustainability in terms of energy for for the logistics sector, for example. Um, Guillaume, you've obviously been uh, wandering the halls, talking to a number of people. So wh what's your take on, on the mood and I guess any, any thoughts that you've got around the, the sentiment here? Yeah, I think uh, in relation to the mood, as you were mentioning, depending you know, on where you're investing as well, you have uh, obviously you know, a feeling of apocalypse, of denial, of uh, standstill. But 
You know, I would be more optimistic, and maybe uh, I'm, uh, I'm a bit foolish to, to find, uh, I would say, optimism in that kind of uh, gloomy kind of background. But as you were mentioning, you know, the ESG features for the real estate is a great opportunity. I mean, the tenants are calling for it. We're listening to the tenant, as you were mentioning. Everyone is really concerned. It's not just the tech guys who are trying to wave the green banner and, you know, senior management is into it. And I think especially for, you know, developers or you know, mostly value-add players, there's a, a tremendous opportunity to turn the stock as of now into, I would say, workable assets. Because as, as of now, most of the assets, even the one delivered, I would say, four or five years ago, do not have the code that, you know, the new, I would say, kind of tenants want. So there, I think there's, a, you know, there's a, a green shift to be turned, but really operational, not just having, you know, some kind of labels or some kind of features that makes you green just for a bond perspective or for, you know, and LPs kind of things. You really need to to have a functionable asset. And second, I think, you know, we just forgot in the last years as debt was cheap and everything was kind of obvious. Maybe it's, it's, not, it's not proper to say this, but for the last, I would say, four or five years, it was really hard to lose money when you were doing real estate because, you know, every single quarter, you know, the yield were compressing thanks to the ECB and, you know, not less to the Fed, but mostly to the ECB and to the bank that were kind of pushing around. And now we're, we're just getting back to a kind of normal situation where, you know, if you're value add, you get a value add risk. If you core, you get a core risk and core plus risk. Obviously, you have to adapt and to adjust to the new kind of ECB rates and the new bank rates and everything. But I think it's it's more sane to have you know such kind of distinction and segmentation within the market, where you know a couple of quarters ago, everyone was chasing the same thing, and uh, you know you had value add people in the in the midst of a core core plus situation, and it's you know. Uh, it was really hard to really understand what was the strategy behind. So I think it's it's more back to normal. And we just forgot along the years that, well, you need to pay for debt, you need to have maybe lower returns, and you need to work. Yeah, I think that came through clearly, actually, in a lot of the discussions we had as well, that that you couldn't rely on leverage any longer to be able to provide the, the, the lift that you were looking for in terms of the returns. And actually now was a time for, for specialists and for people who understood the market to, to really work those assets, uh, find the right opportunities, and that if you did, um, then there would be big opportunities available for you. Shout out because I'm English, but I live in Poland, and I went to a couple of Ukrainian sessions, and they were very interesting. The rebuilding has already, actually already started, and according to the speakers, the, the residential market is getting back on. But they are, Ukraine is relying on the international community to come in, and there's also a chance for building in a really sustainable way. So, you know, it was very much focused on the positive side of things obviously it's very difficult uh, very difficult there at the moment but they were looking to the future and there are some real moves to to finance um, reconstruction etc so that was very important to hear yeah I thought that was a really positive message actually when I read the story in the daily news um, a it surprised me that there was rebuilding going on um, but it was very good to see that kind of positive story I think Thanks, Guillaume. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Nicole, for joining us here live at Expo Real. Thank you for joining us uh, and look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the real asset markets. Yeah.